In this video, we leave the South Pass for Harifa, where we hunker down with 43 other boats for 10 days because of the forecasted Maramu. We'll show you why Harifa is the best place to be for a Maramu, what horrifying discovery I made in both of our bows, and how the amazing community of cruisers spent their time while the winds blew. We are leaving the South Pass for the last time. Oh, heartbreaking but we've got to go, we've got a Maramu coming, and that means that we have got to get protection in the southeast corner of the Atoll of Fakarava. We have a really short trip. We are just heading to Harifa, which is about six nautical miles from here, so about an hour, hour and a half, and everything looks really good, great wind and great sunshine, so it should be a quick trip, and we're looking forward to getting some protection. Oh, that's really good, I think we're good now. All this stitching was coming out. I've stitched that up. Accidentally put a nice uh, burn in our sail, getting too close with the torch. And I just sewed that stitching as well. And I don't know why our stitching is coming out. It's not even two years old. But, and they, I know they used really good thread, but for some reason it's coming out. This is coming out too, and this I'm not going to be able to do. It's too thick to do by hand. So. Such a bummer. We are in Harifa, and thankfully the bad weather is going out the south, and we've got beautiful blue skies and a beautiful anchorage here. And we'll be here for a week or so till the big storm passes. As the Maramu gets closer, more boats are going to arrive. We currently have seven boats in the anchorage. Yesterday we had three, so we're already increasing. And I would imagine by the end of today, we'll at least double what we've got now. Time will tell. It's a beautiful morning here. Look at how gorgeous this anchorage is. The water, the clarity, it's absolutely stunning. I think my favorite part is the sandbars over there. If you're in Fakarava and you end up in a Maramu, then Harifa is the place to be. It has incredible coverage from the south and the southeast where the fortified winds come from, but there's also a huge amount of space to anchor and a large area that is just sand, so you don't actually have to float your chain. So most of the catamarans are up close to the beach because we can all get into seven, eight feet of water and it is the perfect protection up there as well as just letting your chain be on the sand and not having to float the chain. Man, oh man, the winds from the north and the northwest have really started. It is rough out here. Brown is out swimming in this. A lot of wind. This will be for another 24 hours and then the wind will shift to the south southeast, which is perfect because we'll be blocked by the island. So tomorrow night the wind shifts here, but before that happens, the wind's gonna do a clocking 360 this way and then to there. So we've got another 24 hours of it being fairly uncomfortable until things change. First morning of south wind and oh, it is so nice. The seas are calm. The wind has now turned to behind the reef instead of coming across the atoll. So we've got a totally calm anchorage, which is such a gift after the bucking bronco. Look, we even had to tie our straps on for our dinghy because it was flying around. But it is chilly this morning because south winds are 
really, really cold, opposite of the Northern Hemisphere, but we're very thankful that it's calm again. Here's what Predict Wind is forecasting over the next 10 days. As you can see, the wind and the gusts will be up in the 30s and 40s, so it's really a good thing that we have a lot of protection here. Let me just, I'm spraying acid, strong acid, and I gotta make sure. Boat work is one of the things that we get done during Maramuz as well. And uh, here's the captain working on cleaning the stains off of our sugar scoop. Here we go. Change in an impeller. Women who change impellers are women who move the world. How you doing, Susie? Good. You're having all the fun. It is time for some spring cleaning. We are stuck here in Harifa for the Maramu for about 10 days. So one of my plans is to clean out the bow, which I do every six to eight months, nine months, depending on how bad the mold gets, because it's pretty nasty. But it's such a pain in the neck because I literally have to clean out everything out of the bow and put all of the stuff in the back bedroom so that <laughs> I have access to the bow without being encumbered. So we're gonna clean it out on both sides. So far 25.2, max wind speed, minimum 21. One of the things Brown is not very happy with me about is when I look around the boat and do some cleaning because I always find things that are wrong. But he also is very happy that I find the things too. Today I have found some really interesting and a little unnerving things. If you recall back in December, we had our martingale changed and the person who did it was a guy called Steve at Shelter Bay Marina. As he was loosening the martingale, the bow was separating, the two holes were coming apart. And so he had a very hard time getting the pin out. We have never really been fully confident of what Steve did in terms of his tensioning of the martingale. He did it by eye, he doesn't have a tensioning machine. I think the big mistake he made was he didn't go out for a sale with us, which he should have done to be able to check the tension on the martingale and the shrouds since he messed with those. While we were crossing the Pacific Ocean, our shrouds were way too loose and our force day was shuddering and that was a big problem. Well, thankfully we had bought the wrenches and you can see that all in the video. Unfortunately, that wasn't the end of the issue and now we have a problem in the bow that we're gonna have to take care of. I noticed that we've got rippling effect on the, the board here with the liner all the way down to the end. That means we've got water ingress. So I was expecting to find something here, which could be any one of these fittings, but came up here and saw this huge crack, which is really not good. It's the first layer of fiberglass that has come apart and separated from the rest of it. What's more concerning to me is the gash that I have now found underneath the cross beam bolts. There's one here and then there are two on the backside which are difficult to see, but that could be structural. And so that is the biggest concern right now, more than the fiberglass coming apart at the top, though that is a, a concern anyway. But this is something that could be structural and could be a weakness that could result in losing the mast or the cross beam tension or whatever. Now, what is the cause of that? I don't know, but my guess is the cause is because of the tightening of the martingale or the detensioning of the rig. On my first time through, I missed this crack, but second time through after seeing the same crack on the port side, I looked over here and we've got this crack across the crash box. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. So of course the big question in my mind is, is the boat able to be sailed? What sails can we use? What do we need to be looking for while we're sailing? Do we need to cut our time short and go straight to Tahiti now? Or can we continue on our path through the Tuamotos and show up in Tahiti as we had scheduled in November? So a lot of questions and hopefully we'll get some answers before we leave. Harifa, we've got the time here to figure it out. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a lot bigger job than we thought it was gonna be, and it seems like this could have been prevented if it was done correctly. We've learned a lesson. All right, we spent a lot of time here because of Maramuz. What were some of your favorite memories from being here? So we love to swim and work out, and we also get together with other cruisers. We have parties on each other's boats. 
another Maramu party. <laughs> Seems like we have these pretty often, almost every night. Whether it's a dinghy float or someone has happy hour on their boat or we meet on the beach for games, there's always something happening. And tonight we're headed to Sauvage who is hosting a happy hour. It's been a beautiful day. Just another normal Maramu day in Harifa. And the last one at Harifa, they had like a little concert a lot of the cruisers know how to play instruments. They sing sailor songs, which is a whole nother musical segment that we really relate to because it has to do with what we do. And so it really means a whole lot. And it's just good down home entertainment and people will all bring something to eat and drink and to share people from all over the world getting together and enjoying each other's companies. We have bonfires and we help each other when it comes to doing boat projects. And it's just, you can catch up on your cooking. You can catch up on filling your tanks. You just have more time to rest and to be productive and more time to play, quite frankly. Some people don't like the Maramoos and I'm thinking to myself, uh, I don't see why they wouldn't because if you're at the right spot with the right people, it's a no-lose situation. Harifa really grew on me. I didn't like it initially, but after the fourth Maramu, I really liked it a lot. It was so different than Tahanea. It was very, very social and I liked that we always started each of the Maramus with a dinghy float party and that's how we got to know each other. We introduced ourselves. We knew each other's boat names. We started a WhatsApp group for the Maramu. And so then it was easy to disseminate information for any kind of activity that was going on. We did a lot of shelling. We, we walked the outside oh, reef, yeah, the that. ocean reef. It was beautiful on the ocean side, super windy, but we would find really fun treasures every single time we went. So that was just great. Just to get exercise, get off the boat, a little bit of ocean spray. And then the animals were amazing. Uh, there are pigs everywhere, but we went and visited one of the locals, a woman called Marhatna, I think her name is. And she has a copra farm. It's not really that active anymore, but her family used to do that. And now she just raises pigs. And when we were there, her pigs had just had piglets. So I got to hold one of the piglets, which was amazing. Nothing cuter than little piglets. Oh, squealing little, <laughs> little bundle of joy. So that was really cool. And then the dog, we spent a lot of time with Chocolat, the brown dog that was there. And she had puppies. So I got to hold four day old puppies. That was absolutely amazing too. So the animals were pretty incredible. And if it wasn't a Maramu, we probably wouldn't have slowed down. No, much. not to do that yeah. for sure. We also spent a lot of time on Cruiser's Beach. That's where we had the bonfires. We played bocce. Those were some fun games. We did a lot of crafty stuff. Never thought we would do crafty stuff. Oh, that's stuff. right. I forgot all about that. I, I learned how we to- make make coconut bowls. I learned how to splice Dyneema. We made bracelets on Sauvage. That was very cool. So yeah, just a lot of things that you wouldn't ordinarily do, you, you just do during a Maramu. One of the things that we don't do, but most people in Harifa ah. did, was kiting and foiling. It was really fun to see the kiters and the foilers out every single day. There's uh -huh. a kite school there. They teach you if you want to learn. So that's an activity that a lot of people take part in. And another thing is, being in Harifa, if you want to dive the South Pass, and you're a little limited on time, the dive boats will meet you. Yes, at your boat. Out there. Some people visit the bonnies that are north and they can go and swim with fish out there. We, we snorkeled around the sandbars. Yeah. Okay, it's not the best snorkeling, but it's super clear water. The viz is great. 
and you get some exercise. And there are bommies and some decent coral, not a huge amount of fish, but you get some. And every day we would swim just right out in front of the boat. It's like a big, interesting swimming pool. The Viz isn't great in the Anchorage where we are. It's a little bit cloudy, but it's not a huge <clears throat> amount going on in there anyway, so you may as well just <laughs> swim. If you have a water maker, you want to make all your water before you get to, to any place with southeast coverage because you don't have as clear of water because it's a little bit more murky because there's so much protection doesn't get a lot of flow like you would in a more unprotected place. And we are almost out of here. The Maramu is coming to an end. So we're going to be able to head north and get to see Rotoava and the North Pass. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this <clears throat> video and what there is to do in Harifa specifically, yeah. the importance it plays in the Atoll of Fakarava. And we will see you guys next week with and our next video. Guys, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you share this, especially with other cruiser friends. Please like our videos. And leave a comment, ask us questions. We love to hear from you as always. And a huge thanks to our patrons. We really appreciate your generosity yes. and your encouragement. We thank you guys and we'll see you next week. See you guys. <laughs>